Everybody in this video, I wanna talk about how we can use x-intercepts to graph a polynomial function. So it's essentially a four-step process and we'll break those down in each step on the screen. So it says step one, we're gonna plot the x-intercepts. So we have to know uh, what it looks like when we have x-intercepts. So our polynomial function should be in factored form. And let's say, for example, in our equation or in our function, we had x minus two. So we would know that x minus two is equal to zero. So we would have an x-intercept at two, right? Similarly, if we had x plus four, then the zero product property says we could set that equal to zero, and we would have an x-intercept at negative four, right? So we could go ahead and plot those. And then step two, we wanna plot some points between and beyond our x-intercepts. So um, specifically between, right? And so we wanna know kind of where our curve is or um, where our, maybe like our W-shaped graph, like what the middle looks like, that's important. The reason why that's important, and more so than, the, than beyond the x-intercepts, is because for beyond, we can just think about our end behavior for our polynomial functions. And that's how we can determine what it's gonna look like. Step three, we're just gonna determine our end behavior. And we've uh, made a separate video on this, and I'll link that in the cards right now. But essentially, we have four options here. We're gonna have a positive leading coefficient with an odd degree, so our graph would look like this. A negative leading coefficient and an odd degree, so our graph would look like that a positive leading coefficient in an even degree, so that's what our graph would look like, and a negative leading coefficient in an even degree, and that's what our graph would look like. So that's the essential um, shape of the graph. Now it might look a little bit different, obviously, depending on what um, our, our terms are, but that's essentially what our end behavior should look like. All right, so now for step four, we're gonna draw the graph so that it passes through the points and has the appropriate end behavior. So let's take a look at our example that we have here. So it says graph the function f of x equals 1 fourth times x minus 2 times x plus 3 quantity squared. So it looks like our degree is 2, but we know if we were to multiply x minus 2 by our other binomial of x plus 3, that it would become a cube function, right? And so we would have a cubic function with exponent of a 3, so our degree is a 3 here. So we should think about having um, three zeros, right? Or uh, we might have a repeated root, if you will. So now let's look at our factors here. We have x minus two equals zero. So we can put an x-intercept at two. And we have x plus three equals zero. So we can put an x-intercept at negative three, okay? So for this example, those are gonna be our two x-intercepts because negative three would be a repeated root there. All right, so now in between negative three and two, we have negative two, negative one, zero, and one. And so let's plug in those values for x to see where those points would be to get the middle shape of our graph. And then we know what the end behavior would look like because of our leading coefficient being positive and we have an odd degree because that final degree would be a three, right? So we know that since, our, um, since those, that is our criteria for our end behavior, we know that it would look like this going down and this going up, right? So now we just gotta figure out what our uh, middle of our graph looks like, okay? All right. So let's plug in negative two. So let's find the f of negative two. So we got one fourth times negative two minus two times negative two plus three quantity squared. So one fourth times negative four times one. So this is just gonna give me negative four times one fourth, which is negative one. So we have negative two, negative one. So negative two, negative one for one of our points, okay? All right, now let's find the f of negative one. So one fourth, negative one minus two, negative one plus three quantity squared. So one fourth, negative one minus two would be negative three, negative one plus three would be two and two squared would be four. So now this is negative 12 divided by four, so negative three. So negative one, negative three would be our other point. All right, now let's find the f of zero. Okay, so we're gonna say one fourth, zero minus two, zero plus three squared. So one fourth times negative two times nine. All right, so we're gonna get um, one fourth, so one fourth times negative two would be like negative one half, right? Times nine. So we can say this is negative 4.5. So we have zero comma negative 4.5. So negative 4.5 would be right there. All right, so now lastly, let's find the f of one. So we've got one fourth times one minus two times one plus three quantity squared. So one fourth times negative one. One plus three is four, this would be 16, right? So negative 16 divided by four, negative four. 
So that's a one comma negative four. All right, so we have what our middle of our graph should look like. So now we can just draw our smooth curve or as smooth as possible through our points. And that's how we can graph a polynomial function using its x-intercepts.